What's going on guys? Hey, I had a real busy week last week, a lot of traveling, a lot of flying, so I didn't really have any cool epic, you know, service call footage to take like I've been trying to do the last month. So I thought today I would talk a little bit about HVAC salaries and what the expectations might or should be for people entering the trade or midway or later on in their career and what the kind of myths are versus the reality of what we're seeing today. But before I get into the actual numbers and things like that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab a little prop here to make a point that I think that we need to get out of the way before we start the conversation. Cool stuff you got going on there. Hey, let me ask you, can I borrow some crayons? Um, no way, you had to pay out. I had a feeling you'd ask that. Let's see here. How's, how's that, okay? More? Mm-hmm. All right. All right, you're pushing it now. Now, where are the crayons? Oh, that's the good stuff. Thanks, sweetie. All right. All right, now that we've got the crayons, let's make my point. If I take this bag of crayons and I dump them all over this table, okay, point to any color in that whole pile. Any color you want. My point is, in the industry we live in today with the shortage of qualified technicians and good help, you could fire me today. You know, I could be fired from my position today. I could close my eyes and I could point to any one of those colors and tomorrow morning I could be wearing that colored shirt. Now is that arrogance? No, I'm not being arrogant. I'm being honest and it's a reality. It comes down to pure economics. There is just simply not enough good HVAC help in the world these days, particularly in the United States. And because of that, you're in a very good position to do well for yourself if you put the time into becoming the best technician you can be. Don't ever let an employer tell you that nobody's replaceable because if anybody's replaceable, most of the time it's middle management, not the technicians that can actually perform the work and do it well. So just take that as a little bit of motivation if you are thinking about getting into this field. Once you acquire the skills needed to be a great technician and one with minimal callbacks and above average knowledge of your craft, you have truly cemented yourself in a high demand field that's only gonna get more demanding in the future. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and check the computer here for some actual numbers. If we go ahead and we look on one of these salary websites, this one, glassdoor.com, we type in HVAC technician, we come up with an average base pay of $43,660 per year. We have to keep in mind, guys, when you look at numbers like this, it can be disheartening if that's a lower number than you hoped for. But what you have to remember is that's really a middle number. So what that really means is that 50% of the people in this industry make less than that, 50% make more. This trade is so large and so dynamic and so varied in its nature that it's impossible, in my opinion, to really put one number on it. Now, mathematically, you can do it, but it's not gonna give you an accurate portrayal of what your potential can be in this field. You see, these numbers are taken into account 18 year olds that are getting into the trade right now as helpers and if they've submitted their salary information to this website it gets put into the algorithms of coming out with those averages this is going to bring down the average base pay for the numbers from people who work in very high-end industrial jobs doing custom process refrigeration or chillers uh, design and engineering another huge concept that skews these numbers and something you really have to keep in mind is where you live or plan on living in this country if you're going to be in the field all these numbers are pulled together from across the nation and there are drastic differences in the cost of living in fact let's go ahead and take a look at a cost of living calculator that's easily found on the internet so if I go here, this is nerdwallet.com. There's many more though. And I live in San Francisco and I want to move to Mobile, Alabama. And in San Francisco, I'm making $120,000. 63400 is all I need to make in Alabama to maintain that standard of living. Conversely, if I live in Lexington, Kentucky, and I want to move to New Haven, Connecticut, 
but I make 70,000 in Lexington. Well, I'm going to need to make $95,838 in order to maintain the standard of living that I enjoyed in Lexington. So guys, this should prove the point clearly that this, your cost of living comparison, is actually a more important number than knowing the actual dollar amount that you're being offered or looking for. You need to know what your standard of living is or what your goal standard of living is and then compare that to where you ultimately want to reside. Once you know that, then you know what a good number or a not good number is. It's not the same across the board. Do I know people that make over $100,000 a year as a mechanic or technician in this trade? Absolutely. Do I know guys that make less than $30,000 a year in the trade? Yeah, I do. Some of it has to do with the actual type of work they're doing and their experience in the trade, but also a large amount of that difference in pay comes from the fact that they live on opposite ends of the country in greatly different economic situations. So once we get to know our actual region and what a reasonable standard of living and the appropriate pay is for your area, then we can start looking at things to improve that number from there. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, in my particular region of the country, doing the type of HVAC work that I do, I can stand to reasonably make between 30 and $40 an hour. For my area of the country, that's a very decent living and, and I live comfortably and I have room to grow. Now, the other thing we have to keep in mind is what's gonna take me from being a $30 per hour technician and a $40 an hour technician? Well, besides years of experience in the trade, there are other things you can do to stand out and add to your value to your employer. One of the things you always see on Facebook groups being posted is, is Nate certification worth it, this or that? I can't speak to Nate personally, I'm not Nate certified, but there are many other things that are valued by employers whether Nate is or not. Yes, it's true that a piece of paper doesn't designate your value as a technician, but what about learning to weld? What about getting your plumbing license, electrical license, in addition to HVAC? What about going to every training opportunity you have at your disposal? Going to extra continuing ed classes? Reading constantly, questioning constantly, staying humble, taking a few sales classes, take a few engineering or design classes. Guys, there's so many things that aren't just a piece of paper that add value to your employer and justify an increase in pay. You can max out your pay for the region you live in by doing any number of these things and do it faster than just waiting for your time and grade or your time and service to this trade. These are the kinds of things to focus on versus just an actual fixed number. Where you live in the country, how long you've been doing this trade, and what things you've done above and beyond to add value to yourself as a technician. In addition to that, if you find that you've stagnated in your area, you're not enjoying yourself, or you don't see upper mobility in what you're doing, don't think that I need to leave the HVAC trade because it hasn't worked out for me. Remember, this is an umbrella. This is such a huge trade. There's so many different facets to get into that offer new financial opportunities and personal development chances. If you don't like residential installations, go to commercial service. If you don't like commercial service and it's beating your body down, go into sales if that's your thing. Become a service manager down the road. If you're not as crazy about interaction with people on a daily basis, Get into the engineering side of it. Go into research and development. Put your application in or resume with these OEMs. Get into testing and balancing. Home performance, refrigeration, sheet metal, eddy current services, controls technician, chiller mechanic, process refrigeration, environmental chambers. Find a facility or some kind of manufacturing plant that makes or does something awesome that isn't even HVAC related. Something you would love to work around every day. See if they have an HVAC department or their own in-house maintenance that needs specialized HVAC maintenance and troubleshooting. I'm sure that's enough of an exhaustive list, but it's just to show you guys that just because you're stuck where you're at, you don't feel like there's any more pay in this trade, it's hogwash. There's always more money to be made. It's all about what you've done to level up your own skills and value to your employer and where you are. If you have to relocate in order to get what you want, maybe that's something worth doing. If not, if where you are is where you need to stay, then find the thing that you love doing and the money will be secondary. That pretty much wraps up my opinions and thoughts on salaries in the HVAC industry. What I can tell you to me is most important to pass on to you is to find the element or aspect of this trade that you love doing the most and the money will follow. I would say no matter what area of the trade you're in, it affords people a very comfortable living wherever you live. 
So anyways, guys, got some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, I'm going to be meeting up with a couple good guys here around the, the region of where I live and try to document some of what they do every day. They do really different things than from what I do, and I think it'd be an awesome way to kind of highlight different elements of the trade, which is basically what I've been talking about the last few minutes. Other than that, not much too else going on that's new with me. Uh, I did create a AKHVAC Facebook page for you guys to follow if you'd like. If, you, if you're on Facebook a lot and you want to keep up on things that I don't put on YouTube, you know, they're a little bit smaller, kind of micro content, please go check out the link in the description. Like or follow the page and you can keep up with, you know, all the little other little things I put up throughout the day. It's been a fantastic last four or five weeks and I want to thank everybody who's newly subscribed to this channel. We had a almost 900 subscriber increase in the last 28 days and i'm just overwhelmed and humbled with that and just want to show you my appreciation and thank you um, it's going to motivate me and amp me up to keep putting out the best content i can and constantly be looking to level up production value and with that guys stay safe out there and we'll see you on the next one